I'm really starting to get into the whole idea of building custom sensors using ESP32 and integrating it into Home Assistant. Today, I'm going to give you a quick overview of my latest contraption or design idea or whatever that basically monitors my HVAC system at home. Just in case any issues pop up, I can identify them quickly and hopefully avoid being stuck in the heat. What's up YouTube, Jason here with By My Bits. In today's video, I'm gonna show you a sensor monitor that I created that monitors the air temperature, pressure, air quality, and both the return, which is the air intake of my HVAC, and the supply, which is the condition air out. The motivation for this entire project was solely just to know how my HVAC system is doing and allow me to use that data to know if I need to fix or replace anything. And it all started because now it's summer here in Kansas, and whenever those temperatures go above 100 degrees, my air conditioning has an issue keeping my temperature down to 69 degrees, which is what I have my house set on all summer long. So let's go ahead and fast forward to what I did. The first step was to find a good sensor. Now, after some research, I landed on a BME 680. This is a digital temperature, humidity, air quality, and pressure sensor. You can get two for 26 or three for like $34. Then I used an ESP32 and I'm using an I2C sensor coating. I don't actually know what that means. I'm just letting you know. This is the sensor stuff that I used. And then a bunch of miscellaneous components like a board, switches, power stuff, and things like that. Now the next step to actually building this is to solder everything onto a board, which this is just a generic development board, so I have to make all of the connections manually with wires. I solder the ESP32 and a USB buck converter to the board along with some switches, some LED lights for knowing when the power is turned off, safe to mess with, when the buck converter is turned on, etc. It just allows me to not fry stuff. Also, if you're wondering, I used a buck converter, which I actually fried one. I don't know how that happened. But I'm using the buck converter to take the 12 volts from my power supply down to a steady 4.5 volts and then feeding that to the BME 680 sensors. Those sensors can actually take up to 5 volts maximum. And the reason why I'm adding this additional power supply is because when I hooked everything up to the 3.3 voltage off of the ESP32, all of my sensor readings were off. We're talking 15% differences in humidity from the board sensor over to the 680s. Oh, yeah, I have a separate board sensor that I soldered onto the board itself. And I was noticing up to a 10% difference in temperature when the sensors were right next to each other. So all of that led me to inadequate power supply, so that's why I have a buck converter. Which, by the way, totally fixed it. After I solder this Frankenstein's monster project thing that I got going on, I now had to build extendable sensors that I would actually put into the HVAC ducting. I just used another solder board in order to extend this out because in my mind I thought I wanted it to stick into the duct away from the walls. That way it would get a more accurate reading. I don't actually know if this is a thing, but in my head it was, so this is what I did. To connect these sensors, I also used a basic plastic connector. That way, if I ever have to swap this out, I can easily do so just by unplugging it. And then I used RGB cable in order to make the run. I was originally actually going to use a thick RJ45 cable because I only needed four wires. However, that cable proved difficult to move around in position without putting too much strain on the sensors. So I just landed on the RGB cable because that's what I had. After all this was said and done with the sensor soldered onto the board and the cables connected to the board, I then used heat shrink to wrap everything up to protect it from getting fried by touching something or for that matter, falling off, because who knows, my soldering skills may suck. Now this next part for me was the toughest part because I actually had to drill holes in my HVAC ducting. This is one of those, you know, permanent damage, have to replace it if you mess it up. And also I was a little worried to get metal shavings or pieces down into something and mess something up. Thankfully, as far as I can tell, that didn't happen. I did use some magnets in order to catch some debris, which actually helped tremendously. These are rare earth magnets, they're super strong. So I went to go drill these holes, quickly realized that I did not have a metal drill bit that was big enough to fit the sensor in the board. So I ended up trying my hand with a hole saw that was meant for wood that did not work at all. It basically just scratched the steel. Not surprising, honestly. Then much to my regret, because it's what I had, I ended up using a very aggressive wood drill bit that technically did make it through the steel on both of the ducting, but it also ruined the drill bit. So now I have to buy a new drill bit. If you're going to do this project, I recommend planning ahead and having something to drill into the steel, because this was a really dumb idea. Oh, shit. Okay, got it. Also, little note, I made sure to drill high enough, that way I didn't hit the A-coil that's in the HVAC, because if I did, that would really suck. 
probably be an eight or $900 repair. With the holes drilled, I stuck the sensors in and gotta be honest, I just winged this part. I used some wood and some tape and I just kind of made it to where it was straight into the ducting. I didn't want it laying on the metal or anything like that. So I had aluminum tape and I just kind of taped it until it held in place. This is probably the worst way to do this and I don't recommend it, but I mean, I was on the fence of how to do this. So that's what I landed on. I used aluminum tape because I don't know, I think it's cool. And now for the hard part, which took a little bit of time. Lucky for you, if you do want to repeat this project, I will do my best to link everything in the description down below. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Maybe a text file on my server. Not really sure. But for this part, I had to go into the ESP home and configure this new ESP32 to have all of the sensors that I was going to use to monitor my HVAC system. This included configuring all the basic sensors and then some custom sensors to calculate temperature differences and static air pressure. According to an HVAC guy that is a longtime patron, Jay Derp, thank you very much by the way, the static air pressure and the temperature differences are two of the main things to look at when you want to know if your HVAC system is having issues. But some of the sensors include things like gas resistant, CO2 level approximation, indoor air quality, temperature, humidity, and the calculators for the difference. Air pressure, the PSI converter to water columns in inches, which is another HVAC thing. A static air pressure calculator, air quality rating, the basic Wi-Fi information, uptime IP address of the board, and then the soldered onboard temperature and humidity sensor. Again, this code is down below to show you my progress so far. However, this is not perfect. You're gonna to have to change a lot of things. And if you know what you're doing with this and you wanna give me ideas, leave it in the comment section down below. Once I got all the sensors in ESP Home and I passed it over to Home Assistant, I then went through and built a very quick dashboard to show me the different graphs and all the critical information that I wanted to see. Keep in mind, this is definitely version 1.0. A lot of changes are needed and needs improving. Definitely starting with the graph colors, like after I get a better idea of what numbers are good and bad, I'll be able to change those colors to represent that. And later on, as I improve this, I'm gonna include things like power usage and the HVAC run times. Also, and I'm totally down for some ideas here, I need to build some alert automations, which really is very dependent on the numbers, learning what those numbers are and what I should be worried about. But I will have to consider things like the HVAC being turned off and make sure the alerts aren't false. I have to work in some kind of calculations or delays or something to make sure I'm not getting a bunch of false alerts. I haven't even started all that because I worked all weekend to get this where it is now. So a lot of improvements are on the horizon for me. So with all that said, I just want to reiterate that you can replicate this project if you want with the code and the hardware and everything that I showed you here. You're definitely going to need some basic electronics knowledge, some very basic soldering skills. And depending on how you end up soldering everything together, you're going to need all of the miscellaneous electronic parts that I used. This could be boards, switches, LEDs, power supplies, etc. Aside from buying the sensors, I built this based off what I already had on me. So if you did replicate this, your build is definitely going to vary. And I can't stress enough, all of this was just a learning curve for me. If I were to go back and redo it, I already have some improvements in mind. But still, if you have ideas for improvements, I definitely want to hear about it in the comments. Last but not least, the dashboard that I built, I will give you the code, but I do have a lot of different add-ons for Home Assistant. So if you want to use that code specifically, you're going to have to reference the types for all the custom Home Assistant integrations that I added. I don't know what they are. I didn't make a list of them, but if you try to use the code, you'll see what each one is. Well, that's it for today, guys. Now I have the ability to monitor the static pressure, the temperature, the temperature differences, et cetera, everything in my HVAC, my air conditioning, my furnace, et cetera. Moving forward, this is going to help me because if my temperature differences are, let's say, less than 20 degrees Fahrenheit, or the static pressure is way low when it should be higher, I don't really know these numbers yet. But once I get a grasp for all these numbers, I'll be able to look at all that, know exactly what is wrong with my AC, if there is something wrong, and then I can fix it. If you guys have any questions or comments, again, leave them in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe, and have yourself a great day.